recognizing your divine sovereignty, your divine truth, and understanding that you are God and besides thee there is none other. My God, we come before you tonight, God, in Jesus' name, asking God that you would please, Lord, to forgive us of our sin. We come before you now, God, in Jesus' name, asking that, Father, that you would have mercy upon us and keep us and strengthen us. And God, we should ever be so careful to give your name glory and the honor which you so rightly deserve. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let us say amen. Amen. We thank God for all that he's doing. JP, I'm not getting alive, bro. Um, okay, got you covered. Okay, we're going to go ahead and move forward with our Bible study class tonight. We are in an awesome series, and that is the series that we're dealing with uh, is showing this relationship and this dichotomy uh, between pastor and pew or shepherd and sheep. And uh, it's a very interesting study and I'm going to say this is that when I first God first gave me this topic I, I thought that it would be uh, a quick study and I thought that it would be um, that it would be a study that I could study for a few weeks and bring out some truths about it but then once I got into it I found out that it was bigger than I thought and it was going to require more of an exhausted approach to it than I had originally anticipated because when we look at this topic as shepherd sheep, we see that it is such a dynamic topic. You know, in the Bible, this whole concept of shepherd sheep or pastor or shepherd, this concept is mentioned over 200 times, which lets us know from the onset that there are some areas within this that God wants us to be aware of. So we're going to continue in this series and continue in this study tonight of this whole concept of the understanding of pastor and pew. Now in order for us to dive into this, uh, we did an overview on last week, but we want to start at the beginning and look at the origin of this occupation that's called pastoring. And we're going to kind of break this series down, and the only way we can do it is, is, is look at each side. So we're going to start with the shepherd side, and then we're going to go to the sheep side. But in doing the shepherd side, it's important for us to know that we can't do the shepherd side without bringing the sheep in, and we can't do the sheep side vice versa. So, uh, But the emphasis that we're going to initially bring forth is the emphasis of that of uh, the occupation of the shepherd. Now we call them feeders, we call them pastors, we call them shepherds. There are a lot of different names, but at the, at, at the end of the day, uh, it's, it, the whole concept of pastor or shepherd is it's, it's from the Old Testament concept that, that goes consistently throughout the Bible, and it means feeder, okay? It means feeder. So the, the whole, the, the word pastor, the word shepherd, and looking at shepherd, sheep, pastor, pew, it means a feeder. So that's the first thing that's on the onset when we look at this at the, from an occupation, occupational standpoint. So now in order to look at it from an occupational standpoint, we've got to go back to the first um, shepherd and look at the first shepherd and figuratively kind of put this together tonight in the light of the shepherd. Now, the way we find this is we go back to Genesis 1. Okay, go, I'm Genesis 4. So we go back to Genesis 4. And when we go back to Genesis 4, we'll see the first shepherd. And we want to look at how this came to be and why this came to be. Okay, so now I'm scrolling. Okay, the first shepherd was that of, uh, we look at the Bible, look at Genesis 4 and 1. It says, and 
Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. So now, when we look at this, the first shepherd was Abel. Okay? Now that word keeper means feeder. Okay? It means pastor. It's the same word that means shepherd. So we see here in the onset that 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 Abel was the first pastor. And we're talking about literally now. And so, and you know, we got to look at it from a literal standpoint, which means uh, obviously Abel literally was a keeper of sheep. And Cain was a tiller of the ground. Now, you know, what, what was interesting, too, is when I, when I read this and, and, and looked at this, and it says that on the onset that Abel was a keeper of sheep. And that kind of goes against the evolutionary theory because evolutionists say that that man in the beginning that we were hunters and gatherers, okay? That we hunted for our food. But if you see here, in the very beginning, we see right at the onset that we're not hunters. We're, okay, that, that we're not hunters. We may have at some point become hunters and gatherers, but we see here in the very beginning that Abel was a keeper of sheep. Okay, so so that's that, that that's kind of you know uh, uh, a bullet point on the side when we're looking at it, but and that kind of helps us when we're dealing with with evolutionists and and how does the Bible address some of the issues of evolution, and again evolution evolution teaches us that 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 you know we 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 came from a single cell or whatever they want to call it and we develop we develop da 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 da. And eventually we walked around with clubs. Remember that? That we walked around with the cavemen, walked around with clubs, and, and we were hunters and gatherers. But that's not what the Bible is saying here, okay? So the first thing we see here when we look at this dichotomy, when we look at this whole aspect of, of sheep and shepherd, are, you, are we picking up the live? We, you, we, we picked up the live? We, on, we live, JP? Okay, great. So we look at this whole aspect of, of Cain and Abel, and we see that Abel was the first pastor, right? And that's very interesting here when we look at this because there's a lot that we're learning in the literal aspect of sheep, shepherd, and the whole, now remember, tonight we're kind of focusing on the shepherd side and kind of looking at that from the first aspect of the first shepherd. Now, this word, again, keeper, it says a feeder of sheep. Now, what's very interesting is that when you look at what um, Abel did, is that Abel fed the sheep, okay? Which simply means that that Abel um, put the sheep before him because he was a feeder of sheep. And then we'll look more into that as to the whole um, role of the shepherd. But here we see Abel, a feeder of the sheep. And now when we look at Cain, it says that Cain was a tiller of the ground, right? We see that? And see, that's a very interesting, when we look at the Hebrew syntax of this, it's very interesting and revealing to us what the scripture is saying to us. And remember, the Holy Spirit is a super grammaticarium. Every word in the Bible is there for a reason. So when we study these words and come to understand what they're saying, it says here that, 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 that Cain fed the sheep. Now, the first thing that we want to look at and, 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 of all the animals that were in the animal kingdom, okay? Why sheep? Okay, why sheep? Why does the Bible come out of the chute, 
giving us the analogy of the pastor, okay? That's the first thing that we see outside of the garden. The first thing that we see outside of the garden is a relationship between pastor and sheep. You feel me? So that's what drew really drew me in is that because at first, again, I'm thinking it's going to be a mild study, but then once I get into it, I find out that it's deeper than I thought it was, and it carries more magnitude than I initially thought because why sheep, okay? And we're going to look at some interesting aspects of sheep as God is here showing us this dichotomy, as God is showing us from the beginning that this is important to him that this relationship between sheep and shepherd is important to God, okay? But you got to look at this word tiller, and, and, you know, for us Bible students, and you can go to your Strong's, and you'll see there are some very, very interesting words for this word tiller. And, 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 and let's, let's kind of look at some, some words that this, this, this Hebrew concept of tiller says that Abel... Abel was a tiller of the ground, and his brother Cain fed the sheep. He was a feeder of the sheep. So before we even get into the offer, we got to look at a couple of things. You look at some interesting words that describe this word tiller, and this is what Abel was, okay? The word means to work. Now, Strong says by implication, it means to serve or to become enslaved to, okay? And it means if you go on and you look through these various words that Strong has told us that this Hebrew word till means, the end of it means to worship. So Cain worshiped the ground while Abel fed the sheep. So we see this, this beginning of this, of this antagonism between shepherd and and worshipers of the world. You see, so y y we're starting to see this very, very interesting aspect here because now you're seeing that Abel humbly um, uh, watched sheep and fed sheep, whereby his brother Cain worshiped the ground. You know, we already heard to say you worship the ground you walk on. Yeah, he worshiped the ground he walked on because out of the ground brought his value, okay? He got his value from the ground. So, so the world supplied him with his value. You see what I'm saying? So we see from the onset, and the Bible tells, in, tells us in verse 3, right after we get this information, verse 3 says, and it came, and in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the first fruit of his offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstling of his flock and the fattest thereof. Do we see that, church? Now, but look at something here. Let's look at the, the offering first, and then, because we, we're trying to show something here. Cain brought the fruit, I'm sorry, not the first fruit, but he brought the fruit of the ground, an offering unto the Lord. Now, look at the difference. And Abel, uh, he also brought the firstling of his flock and of uh, the fat thereof. Okay, now you got to look at the two offerings. Okay, let's look at that. Look at what Cain brings. You got to watch because you'll get these boys mixed up sometimes, Okay. Cain brought the fruit of the ground. In other words, remember, he worshiped the ground, okay? He worshiped what came up out of the ground, okay? And because what came up out of the ground brought him value, he worshiped the ground. You with me, church? And so now when his offering time came up, he didn't pick good fruit off the tree. Okay, you see what I'm saying? Okay, look at the difference now, and look at the difference in the occupations, okay? He's of the world, per se, okay? 
is me is me and mine. This is this is what's on. It's like I'm I'm, I'm holding on to this, and 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 this is mine. So what I'll do is I'll bring God my leftover. I'll bring God what's left on the ground, but God does not deserve the first and the good fruit that's in the tree. Okay? So you got to look at the concept here. The concept is that is that this boy is bringing God, okay? He's bringing to God fruit that have fallen off the tree that's on the ground. Now we're from California, and 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 one thing we know that is fruit trees all and fruit pickers all over the place. Okay, you got fruit trees and fruit pickers all over the place. And one thing you know about fruit pickers, they picking off the tree. Okay, they always picking off the tree. You with me? Because the good fruit is in the tree. Once it hits the ground, then there's so many different elements of that fruit. Okay, it's been stepped on, it's been eaten by. It, it's just. Once it hits the ground, it becomes something else other than in the tree. You got me. You can eat it off the tree, but you can't eat it off the ground. So then we see here that, 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 that Cain brings God fruit of the ground. Now Abel, on the other hand, the pastor, okay, he brought the firstling of the flock and the fat thereof. Now th what this is saying, that, that, that Abel brought God the best. Now look at the best that Abel brought God, okay? So Abel brings God the best, okay? So Abel doesn't bring God the, 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 the small sheep, okay? He doesn't bring God what's left over, okay? He brings God the best. And not only does he bring God the best, but he brings God the fat thereof, okay? The first thing of the flock and of the fat thereof. Now what this is saying here is that He's bringing the best, but not only is he bringing the best, but he's bringing the best of the best, okay? So he goes through and he brings God the best of the best because he's saying as a pastor and as a keeper of sheep, okay, and that I have to set an example in my worship to God, and I'm bringing God the best of the best. You know, one of the best steaks we can eat, is was that the Wagyu steak? What's that thing called? Wagyu steak, yeah, okay. Now, what makes this steak the best steak is what? The the fat. It's the marble, okay. That makes this steak the best steak, and that's what that's what's happening here, is that what what Abel is bringing God, not just the best of his flock, but he's bringing. You see, you got to see the process, okay. So if we look at this from the text, it says first of all he separates the best, okay. And then now he goes through the best and finds the best. And so now when, when we see this, we see that the heart of a shepherd, we're seeing the heart of the shepherd, and the heart of the shepherd is to bring God the best. Now let me say this too. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're gonna deal with this later on. We will later on the, in, the, in the series. But I need to put a pen right here and say that the thing about shepherds in the Bible and the concept of shepherds is that uh, shepherds always had a vested interest in the sheep. Okay? Now we'll see throughout the Bible that, that the shepherds that shepherd sheep starting with Cain had a vested interest in the sheep. So there was a care for the sheep and we're going to see that this job of shepherd is just a grueling job. It's a 24-7 job. I mean, the literal, before we get to the figurative, the literal is 24, okay? It's 24-7 all day. That job never ends. So God is setting this up even now and saying to us that this dichotomy of sheep and shepherd is a 24-7 situation because, because I stopped and I thought, again, why sheep, okay? And when we look at this whole concept of why sheep, is that when we look at the character of sheep, okay, and we look at the character, you got to remember now, verse 4 of Genesis is right after sin. It's right after sin. So it's right after humanity is expelled from the garden. 
And so now what God is saying here is that the character of the sheep is figuratively similar to the character of the sinner. Okay? And that's why sheep, because sheep wander. Okay? There are so many characteristics um, that we will see. You know, a um, uh, 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 sheep don't eat out of troughs. Okay? They don't eat. They have to they have to be led to a pasture to graze. Okay? Another thing, church, is that 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 separates the character of sheep and goat is that goats the goats are going to find forage to eat. They're gonna find, they're gonna wander and find forage. Okay? Sheep doesn't know how to wander and find forage. Sheep has to be led to food. Are y'all with me? So you see these different elements that God is establishing here by telling us that the relationship that's important that, 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 that simulates that of a sinner, that simulates that of a human who needs guidance is that of a sheep. Okay? And, and, and I don't want to get ahead of myself because, again, this topic is so broad. And see, ultimately, we're, we're going... We're heading to John 20, uh, you know, and, 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 and that, that, that famous scene with, 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 with Peter and Jesus, John 21, where, where, where Jesus says to Peter, loveth thou me more than these, feed my sheep. That's where we're going. But that's a ways off right now. And, and, and when we see this thing, we see that back to verse 4, chapter 4 of Genesis, that in the process of time, Cain brought the fruit of the ground, and Abel brought the first of the flock. He brought the, the, the best. And the Bible tells us that God had respect unto Abel. You see that, church? That God had respect unto Abel. Now, when we look at what God had unto Abel, it means that God had compassion. That God, it, This word means to gaze, to look at to consider. It means to be dismayed. God was pleased with what Abel brought, brought to him. Why was God pleased? God was pleased because of the sacrifice that Abel had made in bringing his offering to God. God is pleased with sacrifice. And so that's one of the first key elements that God is showing us in this relationship that is going to require sacrifice. I want to go back and kind of look at something too when we're looking at the origin of this position and how this position works out as a shepherd. It says too is that if we can go back um, to um, let's see let's go back to verse 2 of, of, of chapter 4. And it says, and she again bare his brother Abel. Now watch. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Now, I, I, I looked at that again, and I said, where, other than the conjunction but, okay? Because we see the conjunction is showing some contrast, okay? That's the first thing that we see is some contrast. Here and 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 in the separation of the shepherd, there must be contrast. There must be a distinction between the feeder of the sheep and the tiller of the ground. There must be a distinction between the one who sacrifices as opposed to the one who's selfish. Okay? Because when we look at it, is that Cain was selfish, okay? He only cared about himself. He didn't, he, he didn't consider God. He cared about himself and himself only. But another interesting aspect is that word was. And when we look at that in the, in the King James, it says, and Abel was a keeper, but Cain was a tiller. And that, that they looked the same 
they mean the same, but, but they're coming from a different aspect of, of, of meaning. Now, this first, it says, Abel was, that's in an in, 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 in imperfect tense, an imperfect sin, which means that it was a continuous action, okay? So it means that Abel, as a shepherd, um, it was a continuous action that never ended. On the other hand, Cain was a tiller. He was, and that word is in the perfect. That means that it happened one time. You with me, church? It means that I got mine and I'm good. As opposed to the shepherd who never stops shepherding. Continuous action, okay? As opposed to perfect action, which simply says, I'm good. You know, I got mine. I'm going to throw a little bit at God, and I'm good to go. You see, you see the difference here. And see, a lot of times, we as Christians, we, we, we get caught up sometimes. We think, we think like Cain. Okay, God, I, 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 okay, God, I gave you my, I gave now. I'm, I'm done. Don't come at me no more. You feel me? But, but this whole aspect of sacrifice as a Christian, it requires a continuous action. Okay, it requires over and over again doing the same thing. So then we see here that, 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 that it says that, um, the Lord had respect, back to verse 4, unto Abel, but unto Cain and his offering he had no respect. Zero. And Cain was upset, and his countenance fell. Do y'all see that, church? So I, I want us to see something real quick here, is that, 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 that it is the antagonism that goes along with this concept of a shepherd. This, it didn't just start, okay? It didn't just start because the shepherd, and again, we're going to look at both aspects of sheep and shepherd. We're focusing a little bit on the shepherd tonight. In other words, what it says here that, 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 that Abel, uh, that, that his face changed, okay? that his attitude changed, that his whole being changed, and the reason that it changed was because he was upset with God. See, he wasn't upset with his brother. You with me? He was upset with his God. Why didn't you take my offering and accept it his. So you see as Christians that you're going to always have, you're going to always have to deal with that antagonism that comes from your sacrifices to God. And it will always go against that which the principles of the worshipers of the ground. It will always go against those who are worshiping the world as opposed to those who are giving God the best of their service. So we see here that the origin of this whole concept is that of God presents this in Genesis 4, and the first out of the gate, God presents to us the element and the aspect of the feeder of the sheep. So the first thing that we see, that the shepherd, the pastor, his occupation is the feeder of the sheep. Remember Jesus said again in 21, loving me, feed my sheep, feed my sheep, feed my lamb, okay? It's about a feeder, a feeder. The pastor is a feeder. Now, now the interesting element and the interesting aspect of this whole concept of pastoring church is that we want to look at a couple of elements tonight and and, and basically introduce some things, and then we're going to move on. So now, we said that, that the shepherd 
has to have a vested interest in the sheep, right? Okay, there must be a reason, a vested interest in the sheep. And when we look at it from a biblical standpoint, is that the shepherds biblically like Abel would shepherd his own sheep, but later it came down to that of the family member. Okay? And another interesting thing is that, that, that goes along with Genesis 4 is that initially they all were shepherds, okay? But then uh, as time moved on and agriculture increased, the, the job of the shepherd be, became the low totem pole job, okay? It was, it was the least job. It was the job that got, no, got zero glory, because you remember David and you see all these. But the interesting aspect is that when we look at the, the vested interest with shepherd and sheep is that in the Bible, in the Old Testament, literally, the shepherd is keeping normally a family member's sheep. Moses, his, his father-in-law, okay? Jacob, his daddy, okay? Rachel, her daddy. You with me, church? David, his daddy. The sheep belong to the family. And the shepherd was part of the family of the sheep owner. So that was a vested interest in the sheep. As opposed to a hired hand. Okay, there's a difference. The vested interest in the sheep said that the shepherd who kept the sheep. Let me kind of break down a normal day for a shepherd, okay? Um, from a literal standpoint and from a biblical standpoint, okay? So now, the shepherd would get up in the morning and what the shepherd would do is that the shepherd would lead the sheep Okay, from the sheepfold. This is the beginning early in the morning. From the sheepfold, and the shepherd would lead the sheep to pastures, okay, to graze. And the sheep followed the shepherd. And you got to see this interesting dichotomy again. Why sheep? Okay, the sheep followed the shepherd to grazing. And again, Goats would go off and find forage. Okay, they would they would find forage, trees, that kind of stuff. Sheep were very particular and are particular about what they eat. So the shepherd's job was to find what the sheep liked. You with me? And to bring them to the pasture where they can graze and have not a need for anything else. And this comes from knowing what the sheep desire. Now David said, the Lord is my shepherd. Okay. Now he says, I shall not want. What David is saying here in Psalm 23, that Yahweh to me is like a shepherd. You see how it, that's, that, that's what he's, he's saying. God to me is like a shepherd. So, and David knowing that of a shepherd, being that's his background, he says, to me, when I look at God, he's like a shepherd, okay? Because as a shepherd, David is saying, I knew what my sheep needed. I knew what my father's sheep needed, so I would take them to the grazing spot that they liked. And when they got to that spot, they would not want anything else. So David says, to me, God is like my shepherd, and because he's my shepherd, he knows what's good for me. And because he knows what's good for me, then there's nothing else that I need. Okay? So let's go back. Okay, after the shepherd would lead the sheep, 
and, and lead them to, 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 to their morning graves. Then the shepherd's next job was to lead the sheep to drinking water. Okay? Now here's the thing about, this says that, that, that the Lord shall not, shall not want, he make me to lie down in green pastures, right? And, 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 under, and understand what he's saying about the shepherd aspect, that God knows that, that, that once I'm in a green pasture, okay, it, 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 it symbolizes nourishment for me, and I have no other need. But then he says that, that, that God is like a shepherd in that the sheep, the shepherd brings the sheep to still water. You see that? Okay, so now, why still water? Because sheep are afraid, okay, of rushing water. And, and, and so in order for the sheep to drink from the water, the water has to be still. Making sense? So now, so following the, 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 the feeding, then following the drinking, and then a normal day for the shepherd is that the shepherd would now start to lead the sheep to eat again and ultimately back to the sheepfold, okay? So now, during the course of that time, the shepherd had what was called the rod, okay? And, and, and a cool thing about the rod is that, you know, I saw, as I was studying this and really getting down into the, the depths of the Hebrew context of this is that, you know, the, the shepherd would take the rod sometime and put it on his back and put his arms over the rod to rest his arms while he was walking the sheep, okay? And, and I thought that was pretty cool because, uh, you know, God will allow that which he has given you <laughs> the same opportunity for you to use to chill with, okay? I thought that was kind of cool. Now watch this. So now, what the shepherd did was um, he didn't sleep that much. The only time that he slept was when the sheep were safely grazing, okay? So now following that, the shepherd on a normal day would lead the sheep back to the sheepfold. Okay? and stand there with his rod and would count the sheep as they would go in. They, he'd tap their heels as they would go in and count the sheep. Okay, And if there was one sheep missing, then the shepherd went and found that sheep, Okay, put that sheep in his arms, and brought them back to the fold. Okay? So now once all the sheep got into the fold, then the shepherd sat at the door of the fold, okay? Remember now, he's, he, the sheep were good. They fed, they watered, they back in the fold. But the shepherd is at the door guarding the sheep while they slept from the enemies, from the wolves, okay? Because you got to remember, sheep can't run. They'll just stand there and let a wolf eat them, okay? But it is the shepherd who would ward off the wolves. So at the end of the day, now you got the shepherds, you got the sheep in the fold, shepherd at the gate, or at the door of the, of the fold, guarding the sheep all night long. Y'all with me? Then wake up the next morning, same thing. So it was, a, it was grueling. It, it, was, it, was, it was a grueling, literally, and when we look at it figuratively, it's still the same. It's still the same. Are y'all with me? So in this relationship and this whole aspect, we see that the shepherd has, um, he has a vested interest in the sheep. In other words, those are his sheep. Now watch what Jesus says in John 10 and 12. He's, he's talking about sheep and shepherd. And he says, in John 10 and 12, you, you can write it and read it later if you want or flip to it. He says, but he that is in hireling and not the shepherd. So now, what Jesus is saying here, that there were times when the shepherd had to leave. 
okay, and he'd hire a shepherd, okay, a hired hand, a hired shepherd who had no vested interest in the sheep. You with me? And he says that, but he that is in hireling and not the shepherd who owned the sheep or not. Watch what how he seeth the wolf cometh and leave the sheep. Bro, I ain't getting paid enough for this. You with me? And flee it. I'm out of here. Y'all go, hey, I'm not finna die for y'all. You feel that? And the wolf catches them and scatters the sheep. That's the difference. And the shepherd having a vested interest in the sheep as opposed to a hired hireling. Okay? And I'm going to go ahead and put a pin right here and say that there's no way you can pastor God's people without loving God. Okay? And, and the Bible warns us about pastors and shepherds that are hirelings. Where my money? <laughs> I wish I had somebody with me tonight. Okay? And, 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 and the, the hireling, okay, will leave you out by yourself when you're struggling. But he's saying here that 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 the when the shepherd has a vested interest in the sheep, then the sheep becomes just as important to the shepherd as it does to the owner. It makes sense, church. So when we look at this whole aspect of shepherd sheep, we gotta first of all realize that the shepherd must have a vested interest in the sheep. Because if I'm just hired to do a job, trust me, you know, a lot of us in retail, right? Okay, what they tell you in, 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 in the store. If somebody, if they say, look, let them go. Unfortunately, I just read a story where a young man was killed running behind somebody out the store. But if you come in here in my store stealing, look, I'm, I'm not finna run behind you, okay? Are y'all with me? And see, that's the way, that's the way the hireling is. It's like... I'm just here for a check. <laughs> I'm just here for a check. That's all I want is a check. Now, if you think I'm finna run behind somebody who's stealing a shirt, okay, that's, I'm not gonna do it. You feel me? So there's so many hirelings that we have to understand. And, 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 and I'm not knocking anybody and I'm not pointing a finger at anybody. I'm just saying that there's a difference between a shepherd of his sheep as opposed to someone who has been who has been hired to watch the sheep see what I'm saying and 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 and, and again the Bible says that David's heart was after God right so David understood the value of of of, of God as shepherd and David understood the value of him as shepherd and leading God's people. It's, there has to be a heart involved in it as opposed to a wallet. Y'all with me? I see it, and, 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 and it's okay to call it out because the thing about it is that you know the difference. You know, we know the difference. We we. We, we, we know the difference, and, and I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not knocking, you know, pastors who, you know, work their tails off in their ministry, and God bless them financially. That's not what I'm saying, but what I am saying is that when my focus becomes that of a hireling, when I'm just out here to get a check, and all, all I want is a check, and, and y'all so-and-sos can go on about your business rather than having a vested interest in your heart, rather than being compassionate towards your problems, and, and, and rather than understanding, you know, because, you know, the, the, the shepherd would have to go find the lost sheep, the sheep that's struggling, the weak sheep, and the shepherd would have to carry that sheep in the arms and bring back to the fold. Now I'm gonna put a pin right there and talk about us as sheep for a second, okay? Especially us, uh, 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 us Christian folk, amen. 
We got issues when the shepherd is wrapping one weak sheep in his arms. Okay? We got issues when the, when the pastor is paying attention to a particular aspect of another person's life. Y'all better come on with me and not mine. Amen? I mean, why, I mean, why, why, why? And the reality is that the shepherd, and only the shepherd, recognizes weak sheep. And see, the, 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 what the shepherd is doing, now watch this, as he's leading the flock, okay? You got some sheep that's walk, right there walking right behind them, okay? You got to remember, let me put another pen right here and say, the shepherd leads the flock, okay? He doesn't drive the flock. He's not behind the sheep. It's not a cattle drive, whipping them and beating them and, and get in line. But the shepherd is in front leading the sheep. Are y'all with me, church? So in the shepherd being out front leading the sheep, the shepherd is easily recognizing, can easily recognize the sheep that's struggling. And there are times when the sheep that's struggling, the, 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 the shepherd will Get that sheep and hold that sheep. Don't get mad when the shepherd is holding the sheep and not you. You're not the sheep that's being held right now. Sometimes people require extra attention. See, but the shepherd, you got to have a shepherd's eye and heart to see that. Because it's not a shepherd's heart and eye to see that. It's like, <laughs> you don't need all that attention. You'll be all right. She'll be okay. Why are you always worried about this one? Why are you all, Because the shepherd sees things that you don't see. The shepherd sees the, the, the weak sheep trying to keep up. The shepherd sees the weak sheep that's struggling. You with me, church? So the shepherd can see that whereby you, you're going to get mad at that person. You'll get mad at that person because of whatever you call it, attitude, whatever, insecurities, da da da. We got a whole bunch of names there, but but at the reality, at the end of the day, when God gives a shepherd a sheep fold, then every sheep in that fold has a relationship that's different with that shepherd. It's another interesting thing, too, and we're going to close this out as we kind of just setting up some overviews. But, but another interesting aspect, you know, other than this origin that we talked about and and the vested interest that, that, that the shepherd um, must have in the sheep. But, but there must be also, and we see this biblically, that there's a communication, okay? Okay, now, now the shepherd is not Dr. Doolittle, okay? You with me? So the shepherd doesn't know the different bags. He doesn't know that, okay? But he can determine what's going on with that sheep, just how that sheep says what that sheep is saying. You feel me? The utterance. Now here's the interesting part about it. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice, right? Now I, I thought about that, so okay, now let me see what he's talking about. What he's talking about on the communication aspect is that is that from the onset as the shepherd is training lambs, baby sheep, okay? He starts off by by, by getting them to recognize his utterance, okay? Now, every shepherd had a unique utterance, okay? And, 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 and it was a throat utterance. And every shepherd, from the time that baby came into his fold, taught that baby his utterance. Y'all with me? And there were all sorts of weird utterances that shepherd had. And they were all from the throat, okay? And, and they made no sense to nobody but that sheep. Here's the interesting thing about it. Is that the sheep were so in tune to the utterance of the shepherd that there could be another sheep that uttered from that same frequency and, and, and duplicated that utterance to the T. But the sheep would not follow that person. Sheep are interesting. 
Are y'all with me, church? They understood the utterance of, of their shepherd. And it would be weird, uh, 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 that kind of stuff, okay? It's from the throat. Those, those were the sounds. And each, each shepherd had his own, uh, 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 or whatever, and the sheep knew it. Okay, like we do with our dogs. We whistle, okay? And the dog, your dog know your whistle, right? That's how it was with the shepherd. He established his utterance, okay? And the sheep knew that when the shepherd uttered that it was time to get in line and follow the shepherd, okay? I want to just put a pin right here as we get ready to close and say that, you know, one of our one of the biggest aspects of what we're dealing with right now is is the internet and you know I'm not I'm not gonna bite the hand and feed me because I already got put in Facebook jail Sunday in case y'all didn't know it. <laughs> Amen. I got put in face jail. I'll start talking about world stuff. I'm not gonna even say it again because <laughs> they might put, they put me in Facebook jail because I started talking about worldly politic political stuff and how it it lines up with scripture. Amen. But that's okay. It's okay because we got our app, so, and that's what we're working on. Okay, that app's coming forward. But I was so happy to get. I was so happy when Facebook put me in Facebook jail. I felt like the disciples, you know, after they left, and they, they were so happy to be persecuted. Man, that felt good. I said, okay, well, I'm getting somebody's attention here. Okay, but that was all good. But uh, um, it says that 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 that. Jesus, as I move on, let me move on because I, 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 I want to, I want us to grab this. We're in this time where Jesus says that my shepherd know my voice. He said biblically, but now, church, we have become unfortunately like goats. Okay, we 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 sharing um, different shepherds, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Okay. I'm not saying these shepherds aren't saying good things. Let me say it like that, okay? But we got to be careful what you're listening to on YouTube. You got to be careful what you're sharing with other sheep. You know, you, you feel what I'm saying? Because, you know, it might be good, but it's not good for you, okay? Now, now again, a goat will eat forage, okay? Gonna eat wherever. But a sheep, I'm gonna wait till my shepherd feed me. Because once my shepherd feed me, I shall not want. Make sense? You know, I'm not knocking some of the stuff out there, okay? But now if you wanna share something, share what you eating. If you want to be out there sharing stuff, share if it's good, if, 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 if it's satisfying you, then you ought to want to share every, you, you know, and, and I got to get out of my, get out of my feelings on that one because sometimes I be in my feelings. Can I be real? Like I'm pouring out and feeding and feeding, feeding, but you sharing somebody else stuff? Now that's just me personally as a shepherd because I, I have a vested interest in the sheep. Okay? I'm not knocking you from, that's not what I'm saying. But if I'm pouring out as your shepherd, if you want to share something, that's what you should be sharing first. How, how, many, how many of us are actually going back sharing our sermons, sharing our Bible studies? How many of us are sharing it, but we are willing to share other stuff? that has not been prepared for you. Jesus says that my sheep know my voice. Jesus says that, that, that I am the good shepherd. You with me, church? And what I'm saying is that this relationship, I got six more minutes, this relationship between sheep and shepherd is an extremely intimate relationship and an extremely dependent relationship. The shepherd depends on the sheep. 
and the sheep depends on the shepherd. You with me? You know, one thing that, 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 that's interesting that I found also that was interesting is that the shepherd church, um, he wore a long garment that was sleeveless. And this long garment that was sleeveless came from the wool of the sheep. So, and, and this garment was his garment. In other words, from the wool of the sheep. Watch this literally and figuratively. Is that at the end of the day, when the shepherd was sitting in, in front of the sheepfold or resting while the sheep is grazing, this garment would be also used to cover his head, okay? And he would wrap himself underneath that, which implies that the shepherd needed the sheep to take care of him while he took care of the sheep. Does that make sense? It's a very interesting relationship, and it's a very dependable relationship. So tonight what we're doing, we, we're basically looking at the overview, okay? The overview, that's where we are. Because, again, ultimately, we're getting to John 21. That's where we want to get to and find out just what is Jesus saying to Peter in John 21? What is Jesus saying? Why is this so important to Jesus that this is almost the last words before he before he exits the earth. This is important, okay? Again, this was the first laying out of God was this relationship. And one of the last things that Jesus point out is this relationship. It, it means something, church. It's a very powerful relationship. And again, since this relationship is the key to Christianity, okay? Pastor Pew, okay? And that's all of us, because even as pastor, I'm a sheep, okay? I came from the, I came from, I'm just a, I'm a sheep that's been elevated, not elevated, or given the assignment as a shepherd. So it's not, it's not, it's, and that's where God fixed it. Because Jesus is the only, he's the good shepherd, He's the great shepherd. You, you with me? He's the only shepherd that ain't been a sheep. <laughs> but watch this. He became <laughs> a lamb. <laughs> you know, I better watch that one. <laughs> he became that. He became a lamb to be sacrificed for a sheep. The, the, the relationship is a very intimate, it's a very dependable relationship and because the hedges of, of the hinges of Christianity is, is swinging on that relationship then it would make sense with the devil being as cunning and, and subtle and manipulative as he is to attack that relationship he doesn't want the pew to, pastor, to trust the pastor he does not want the pastor to trust the pew he doesn't want the shepherd to trust the sheep. And see, and you know, I, an old pastor told me once a long time ago that sheep do not know how to attack shepherds. So if a sheep is attacking a shepherd, then another shepherd is teaching that sheep how to attack the pastor because sheep don't attack the shepherd unless they've been taught. Now you go, Bo, to attack. But instinctively, that's not what they do. You with me? So that relationship is such an intimate relationship that is starting to deteriorate. Because, and, and one of the reason that is, reasons that it's starting to deteriorate is because, again, we, we, we're eating forage. Okay, we're going out finding forage on the internet. Okay, we're finding forage. And so when we get back to the sheepfold, we're not hungry. We don't want the green pastures anymore. We want the forage. Because you know why? The forage brings about no accountability. So we are accepting and we're eating almost everything that we can find to eat that sounds good to us on the internet. So by the time we get to Bible study, if we come, 
So a lot of us don't need Bible study anymore because we're already full with the itch and ear stuff, with the forage that we've been eating of. A lot of us can't respect the shepherd because I already ate. I'm good. I can't, I, can't, I can't put you in this position of my feeder because I found food on my own. I, 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 I've done my fact check. I've done my, I've, I got my internet pastor. And a lot of us got four or five different pastors. Isn't that sad? And we're going from this stable to that fold, to this fold, to that fold, that fold. We eating forage all over the place. And by the time we, 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 we finish eating all this forage, we don't need anything else. So now that respect that we have for shepherd is starting to diminish because after all, I'm not being nourished. I'm already nourished as opposed to the sheep. Every fold, you will know your sheep. You with me, church? All of us. All of us have a responsibility. Come on, give God a praise. God bless you tonight. I'm a, I, I, I got so much in this series that, I, that I'm trying to get to, but, you know, it's like diving into this big old pool and, you know, you're trying to get somewhere, but you got to go through these other different nuances to get there because, you know, I want to get to John 21, but I can't get there yet. Uh, in order for us to understand John 21, we got to understand this whole aspect of this sheep shepherd. Know this, that we as believers, you, we will always be attacked. We will all, there will always be antagonism against us. Uh, and, and all these things will be starting to become more and more prevalent. But David said, the Lord is, and that word shepherd that David used in Psalm 23 is the same word that's used in Genesis 4 and 2 for, uh, for Abel. That Abel was the, the keeper, and, and David says that Yahweh is my feeder, and I shall not want, I'm not lacking, because to me, he's like my shepherd, okay? And, and I'm not lacking, and he makes me to just chill in green pastures. Because the sheep would eat, and they would just chill. And the shepherd knew when the sheep was full, and that's when he tried to take a nap, okay? He making me to lie down in green pastures. He, 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 he leaded me besides the still water, okay? So now I'm drinking, and I'm not looking over my shoulder because the water is not rushing. The shepherd settles the sheep. That's what the shepherd does. He settles the sheep. And, and, and when, you know, there are times we come here and we're all frustrated, we're going through stuff, and then God will send forth a word, and we're like, okay, thank you, Lord. I needed that word. I'm settled now. I got it now. I got it. I, I, I need clarification on this. I need a word on this. And God will just settle you. Amen. And God will speak through his shepherd, his under-shepherd, to speak to you, to settle you down. And that, and, that, and that great church, God will chill us. He restores. And, and David says that, that unto me, God is like a shepherd because he, he, he restores my soul. He, he, and what David is saying here, that what God does is that he puts my emotions in the right place. Amen. Because we can become so emotional that our soul is, is, is out of whack, okay? So what God does as a shepherd, he settles you, and he settles us, and then he put our souls back in the right place. And then God leads us down the path of righteousness for his namesake. I'm going to say one more thing about the shepherd. David says, yea, thou walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil because you're with me. See, the sheep, in other words, long as the shepherd was with them, they were okay. Now, this is the thing about the sheep. Sheep didn't realize the danger that they were in, and they didn't care. Because why? The shepherd was with them. <laughs> you feel that? Sheep 
walking through the valley of the shadows of death, I have no fear, okay? Zero fear. I mean, because <laughs> you're with me. And see, that's how God is with us, church. You know, a lot of times we're going through stuff and God won't allow us to see what's really going on. And it doesn't matter what's really going on because as long as you're with me, God, I know it's okay. I know everything is okay. Isn't that amazing? And that's, that, that, that's what he's saying, that the shepherd would, would, would lead us and guide us and, 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 and we're walking. Okay, now look at this. We're not running. We're, we're comfortably walking through sickness. Comfortably walking through financial challenges. Comfortably walking through problems in our lives. Okay? And God will show us and will allow us to know that he's present with us. You know, a lot of times you really don't know how close you were to your end. But it didn't matter because God was with you. Amen, church? Come on, give God a praise. We're going to finish this up and get back on this. And, and remember, church, that, that uh, God has a vested interest in you because you are his sheep. You are the sheep. Don't we say that? of his pasture, okay? So enter into the sheepfold, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Why am I so thankful? Because I made it. The wolf didn't eat me up. <laughs> so Lord, I'm thankful. Come before his courts with singing. Lord, thank you, Jesus. Amen. I am of your sheepfold. Amen. I am your sheep. You're my shepherd. So I am thankful, God, that I made it here safely. God bless you tonight. Let us stand. Amen tonight. God bless you and God keep you. Dear God, we thank you tonight. We glorify you and we magnify you. We lift you up because truly you are worthy to be praised. Now, God, you are our shepherd and we have no want for anything. Lord, teach us to depend on you, to lean on you. Lord, let us not become so selfish that we forget to give you what you deserve, that we forget to glorify you, that we forget to praise you. And God, in the name of your son, Jesus, we ask God that you would continue to watch over us, give us the strength, the patience, and Lord, humble us like sheep that we may follow you, that we may hear you, that we may eat where you lead us to eat. And God, that we not go for forage, or anything that looks good. But Lord, let us wait for you to get us to the place where you know what we need. We thank you. We glorify you. In Jesus' name. And now may the grace of God the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with all of us now henceforth and forevermore. Every heart say amen and thank God. God bless you tonight and God keep you.